this will be the second part of setting up this differential for the Riley 9. Um, I got to the point yesterday where I figured this could be a long process and I didn't really want to start it late in the afternoon and then have to stop halfway through so I've waited until the next day to give it a go. I have blocked and strapped down the torque tube to the bench so that there's no movement in the tube itself. Um, I want to eliminate any play in anything and this is actually showing up the, um, the, the lack of rigidness in my little um, clamp thing here. I might need to get a, a better quality one of those because that seems to move as much as anything else. But with it all strapped down I have adjusted it now to get Uh, it's, it's, a, it's basically right on 5 thou of backlash in there. And I have got the, the pinion flush. The end of the pinion gears are flush with the crown wheel gears, which should give me the right sort of starting position. And it does rotate all the way through its rotation without really binding up. It's quite hard to rotate, actually. Um, but I think that's mainly because I, I pre-oiled everything. So the pinion has already got um, 140 gear oil in there, which is quite thick. So that gives me enough drag on there to, to accurately feel what's going on. But I can't rotate it at the moment with this in the way. Um, so I think the next step is to actually look at the, the pattern I'm, I'm getting. So I'll have to get out the, the bluing compound and try painting some of that on and see if I can actually see these patterns and make sure the final adjustment is, is completely correct. So this is where this starts getting interesting. I've got the, the Prussian blue stuff out, which makes a mess everywhere. And I've got my sandblaster light, which actually makes quite a good work light. Uh, I think it's causing some flickering. On the, on the phone, I'm not sure if that'll come out in the actual film or not. But I've blued up the pinion, and you can sort of see the pattern you get on the teeth there. And that's actually not too bad, I think. That's pretty close to what it should be. Um, the concave side is the driving side, and the inside, or convex side, is the... Um, overrun side. So I've done this in a couple of places. I get a pattern much like that, but the contact patch is kind of in the middle of the teeth and sort of in the middle of the gear and even across. So I think that's already pretty close. What I'm going to do is clean it up and try it a few more times in a few more places and just make sure I really do have that even sort of pattern. Um, as they mention on here. So the one we're aiming for is this one up here. Um, and I, I, yeah, I think that is actually how I've got it, is reasonably close already. This is after my second go at doing this. Um, I'm actually using a little paintbrush to get a very even coating of the bluing on the pinion gear. That's actually working pretty well. Uh, in the documentation, they keep talking about the, the heel and the toe of the, the crown wheel. Um, I had to look that up to, to be certain which way around it is, but the heel is this on the outer side, and the toe is on the inner side here. But you can sort of see the pattern there. It's just heading, it's, it's a little bit more biased towards the toe side than the heel side. Uh, and if we, if we can find where, uh, and this is the pattern on the other side, and again you can see it's a little bit more towards the toe than the heel. So according to my instructions here, I need to move the crown wheel that way slightly. Um, and then you adjust the pinion to maintain the same amount of backlash. So I'm going to do that now. This is where it gets tricky because you don't know how far you have to move it. Um, 
so I'll just pick an arbitrary sort of amount to, to move it. Uh, it's a bit like in software when you're doing a, like a, a binary search. So I'll move it probably one hole around and then see how much difference that makes. And if it's too much, then you halve it um, and check it again. And then you, you, you keep dividing it into halves until you get to the value you need. So just to show what effect moving the adjusters has, I move the, the holes around one position effectively, um, going this way on both sides to, to move it out. And you have to recheck the backlash. So after making that move, I went from 5,000 of backlash to 12, 13. So that's definitely changed the backlash by moving this. So now to compensate, I have to move the pinion gear. And again, it's one of these things where, how far do you move it? So I'll move it one hole around again and remeasure and go from there. I've adjusted it again. I've no idea if these measurements are gonna make any sense or be any help to anyone else doing this. Um, obviously this is just what's working for me and what's, what's happening in my situation. And this is one of those things Again, like in, in the manuals and the articles and the books, they tell you what to do. They don't tell you how much to do it or what to do if it goes wrong. So in this case, they say you just move the pinion, but there's absolutely no indication of how far to move it because it's going to be different in every single situation. So I've now got this back to 5 thou backlash, and I had to move this. Uh, effectively 10 holes around so um, 10 of these put the bar and move it around as far as I could which is effectively one hole around and that got me back to the 5,000 backlash so uh, it's not it's not too hard I tried it with one hole and obviously that made almost no difference so I went to five and that made quite a bit more difference then from there I figured well it's probably going to take another five and that got it spot on so what I can do now is re-blue this uh, clean the old markings off the crown wheel because you don't want them to confuse you and uh, see what the pattern looks like again so second go um, it's still Pretty good up and down the tooth, but I think it's still a bit biased towards the toe. On the overrun side, you can see definitely looks more biased towards the, the inside. So I think I need to do a bit more adjustment of the crown wheel out. I think that's what it was saying. So now I've done it once, I've got a much better idea of what movements I need to make. So if I move this up um, another hole or another two, I'll probably need to move this. If I move it up one hole, I'll probably need to move this another 10 to keep the backlash right. So it gets, it gets easier as you go along, um, as you start working out what what the adjustments you're doing, what effect it's actually having in terms of the measurements. Um, so I'm going to try moving it to positions and see what happens. Um, I think it's a good idea for me to clean this off. I'm using brake parts cleaner uh, before I make the adjustments so that by the time I've finished adjusting it, the, the cleaner has all evaporated off. So it's, it's nice and clean again. Okay, third force I'm losing count set of adjustments um, the adjustments are linear so as I expected moving the crown wheel by two positions meant I did have to move the pinion by 20 um, so that gives me a good ratio for when I am moving these things and the pattern's looking a bit better but I'm not happy that the the pinion seems so far out of mesh with the crown wheel there's you know, about a sixteenth of an inch difference there and I don't think that's right so I'm going to reset them to flush and try measuring it again um, just to see what the pattern looks like 
because I'm, I'm pretty sure it should be more in mesh than that. Um, but at least now I, I have an idea of how far I need to move things. So what I'm actually going to do is move the pinion back in, count how many positions I have to move it, and then I should know how many positions I need to turn these to get the backlash back to 5,000. Uh, that'll be interesting to see if it works out that way. One thing to remember when you're doing all this, you have to keep moving your dial indicator, indicator out of the way because as you adjust the pinion, what's happening on mine is there's enough drag to turn it. So it keeps moving the gear wheel and you don't want to whack your dial indicator. I'd reset everything and then did all of the adjustments again and basically ended up in the same position. So I think that's correct even though the pinion is out a little bit further than the, the crown wheel. Uh, the backlash is correct. The sort of pattern still looks a bit close. A bit too much to the inside on the drive side, but on the overrun side it seems better. Uh, so if they're not even, I'm not sure what you're supposed to do. Um, so I've done it twice now and I think this is kind of as good as I can get it. But I'm going to go and research it a little bit more and just see if there's anything I'm doing wrong or anything I should be doing differently uh, to try and get these patterns to, to match up to be exactly the way they should. Uh, the thing that's worrying me is to adjust it further. Supposedly I need to move this to the left. Um, but looking at it, if this one seems to be getting a little bit too far to the left. So it's getting to the point where you can't adjust it. The holes here uh, are starting to hit the, the bracketry. So that's what makes me think this must be reasonably close to the right sort of position. Um, so like I say, I'm going to go look it up. I'll take a break for a bit. Look it up. Uh, see if that kind of looks correct. The, the good thing is it's smooth all the way around its rotation. Forward and reverse. So I'm thinking that's probably pretty close now. I went away, had a bit of a break, had a beer, um, and tried to find some films online showing how they do this and as is usually the way when you look things up on YouTube like that you get about a million US centric videos um, all about setting up their stuff and how they do it I couldn't really find anything to do with vintage stuff but some of the takeaways I took from the the US ones because a differential is a differential they're not that different um, one, they say put load on the crown wheel when you're doing this. Just load it up a bit so the contact patch is correct. That's actually a little bit tricky for me to do because in all of those, those films that I saw, they were turning the pinion um, to get the markings. And I can't actually do that because there's the pinion. Uh, the end of it is effectively this drive shaft when it's engaged with that muff coupling. So um, I can't easily sit here and turn this and load this up at the same time, unfortunately. I can turn that down there and see what happens though. Uh, the other thing I, I found was they mark the crown wheel and they use a special yellow marking paint type stuff, which I don't even know if you can get that here. Um, but I thought I'd try that, give that a try, and it does kind of work. You can sort of see where the, you, you get the reverse, you get where the, where the bluing is, is worn away, and then you get a, a secondary transfer off the pinion gears onto the crown wheel teeth, and that's kind of, it's kind of in the middle, it, it's pretty much in the middle, it's definitely not off to one side or up or down or way out. So I'm pretty sure I'm close now. 
Um, and I think I mentioned before, it does rotate evenly all the way through. It doesn't feel like it's binding anywhere or anything like that. So I think I'm at the point where I'm just going to have to call this good and put it together and, and go from there. Um, it's definitely going to run. That's not going to be a problem. So I think it's going to be fine. I went away, had a bit of a break, had a beer, um, and tried to find some films online showing how they do this. And as is usually the way when you look things up on YouTube like that, you get about a million US centric videos um, all about setting up their stuff and how they do it. I couldn't really find anything to do with vintage stuff, but some of the takeaways I took from the the US ones, because a differential is a differential, they're not that different. Um, one, they say put load on the crown wheel when you're doing this, just load it up a bit so the contact patch is correct. That's actually a little bit tricky for me to do because in all of those, those films that I saw, they were turning the pinion um, to get the markings. And I can't actually do that because there's the pinion, uh, the end of it is effectively this drive shaft when it's engaged with that muff coupling. So um, I can't easily sit here and turn this and load this up at the same time, unfortunately. I can turn that down there and see what happens though. Uh, the other thing I, I found was they mark the crown wheel and they use a special yellow marking paint type stuff, which I don't even know if you can get that here. Um, but I thought I'd try that, give that a try. And it does kind of work. You can sort of see where the, you, you get the reverse, you get where the, where the bluing is, is worn away. And then you get a, a secondary transfer off the pinion gears onto the crown wheel teeth. And that's kind of, it's kind of in the middle. It's, it's pretty much in the middle. It's definitely not off to one side or up or down or way out. So I'm pretty sure I'm close now. Um, and I think I mentioned before, it does rotate evenly all the way through. It doesn't feel like it's binding anywhere or anything like that. So I think I'm at the point where I'm just going to have to call this good and put it together and, and go from there. Um, it's definitely going to run. That's not going to be a problem. So I think it's going to be fine. Okay, after playing with this for hours, um, measuring it, re-measuring it, setting it, resetting it, doing it over and over and measuring it lots of different ways, I've got to the point where at least the results I'm getting are consistent, even if they're not correct. But I'm pretty sure they're right and I've got it set right. Just doing a final check of the backlash, and that's basically right on five thou. The um, everything rotates nicely. Uh, it's sounding a bit dry because I've been cleaning everything, cleaning all the blue out with carb uh, brake cleaner. So I've washed away all the oil that I had in there originally, so I need to re-oil this. I have replaced the, the cover. This cover has a little pin on the bottom of it that locks the, the pinion in place so that can't move. I need to remember where I've put the lock bolt for this and also make up a leather gasket that goes in there, uh, which just stops any oil leaks. But I think I'm going to call that done and I'm going to have a look at fitting the rear axle housing back onto it now. Um, it does start getting very heavy then so I might need someone to give me a hand to then transfer all of this back onto the car but before I do that I want to get the I need to get the gearbox in place uh, the rear gearbox mount back in place so that when I put, put the torque tube on it slides onto the end of the universal and then I'm going to need to figure out what the what shims I'm going to need in that torque tube 
uh, because you need to shim it to give it the right clearance so so the ball can effectively still move um, but I'm sure the the order the sequence I need to do all that hopefully that becomes clear once I start doing it I have the torque tube bolted on I fitted a gasket in between the two the torque tube and the uh, the rear axle housing um, and made sure there's a lot of uh, Heilemar sealant on that I don't believe there was anything between these two originally and they would often leak so that's all sealed up there's Loctite on the nuts there's spring washers as well uh, I still haven't found the bolt for that and made the, the leather washer there but that's all tightened up now um, I've fitted the little set screws what I ended up doing here was re-drilling the hole in the adjusters. Uh, that was a bit tricky because it's quite hard to drill a hole through an existing hole without damaging the thread. So I started off with a, um, a little uh, pilot drill, a center drill, and the center drill was sort of short enough that it would go through the hole without really cutting the threads on these and let me start the hole and then I was able to finish it off with a drill bit and then I ended up making up new locking set screws for these I measured the depth and machined down the threads on the end of some little set screws uh, to be the diameter of the hole and exactly the right depth so these would, would sort of bottom out and lock in place there doesn't seem to be any sort of locking things on those those little set screws so I've used a lot of Loctite on those um, so they won't come undone and I've re-oiled this uh, it's a little bit sticky but that that all rotates pretty well so I think that'll be fine the backlash is still correct so the next thing to do would be put the cover on I'm not sure if there's supposed to be spring washers under the heads of these bolts. I, I don't think so. Uh, so I'll probably end up lock tightening those on as well. You don't want those to be too tight. You have to be careful how you do this up. You don't want to distort it because that'll cause leaks as well. But that'll end up going on there. So the next thing to do would be get this down and fit it back on the car. But that may be a two-person job and I'm thinking that may be a job for tomorrow night after work. Uh, I still need to refit the the rear gearbox mounting as well so I may do that first. I just did the final little pieces on the torque tube. I found the lock bolt that was uh, just up on my shelf with all the other parts bits and pieces and I made the leather seal that goes in there um, I've no idea what an original one looks like I took a piece of leather folded in half and sort of shoved it into the slot I took the uh, the little locking cover plate off pushed that down into the slot marked where the hole was pulled it out again punched the hole through and then put it back in and put the bolt through um, and then just trimmed it up trimmed around the edges with a scalpel to make it all nice and neat and I think that's done uh, this is what it looks like with the rear cover on there that's just to remind me that it doesn't have any oil in it at the moment one thing I am wondering is if I need to drill the tops of these trunnions for a grease nipple oh there's a spider um, because these need to rotate so normally this would sort of be packed with grease I'm just wondering if it's worth drilling this to put a, a grease nipple there or in the front here somewhere something like that because there isn't anything at the moment uh, when I took these apart they were just full of compressed packed in old grease um, so that looks good I may just now quickly give this a uh, a quick degrease and uh, I'll spray it black I might wait until all this gasket stuff is set um.
it might be a good idea. But it's good to have that done finally. Okay, last thing. I did paint it. Um, hopefully there's not an earthquake or anything tonight, but uh, that should stand up there quite nicely for now.